Happy Halloween, ladies and gents. As is customary at this time of the year, I like to enjoy a bit of thematic Payday 2. Last year, we went around clearing Payday 2's Halloween event heist as a psychopathic mystery killer with every weapon you've ever witnessed wielded by a horror movie villain. This year, I want to one-up myself by turning our heister into one of the most iconic horror characters, Leatherface, transforming some of the mechanics in the game through the power of mods to go on a chainsaw rampage both in Texas and across all other thematic heists. Let's find out if you can clear some of Payday 2's hardest and most terrifying heists as Leatherface. First of all, let's talk about how we've achieved a truly horrific Leatherface cosplay. By combining the dirty Santa outfit and Butcher from Hell mask with John Wick's slightly lank hair, we can get pretty damn close, but it's by the power of Payday 2's modding community that we're truly able to pull this one off. Nova's HD blood textures, bullet dismemberment and the bloody screen effect restoration lets us truly step into a madman's shoes, whilst the longer lumber -like L2 chainsaw makes our weapon almost believable, and the chainsaws that chainsaw 2 mod allows us to actually use our weapon as any insane man would. No longer are we slapping cops with this thing, we're going full lumberjack mode. In case you're wondering, this is pretty OP, but for a horror killer roleplay, I feel like that's about par for the course. In terms of this run's rule set and goals, alongside causing as much mayhem as possible, we'll be aiming to complete every single event heist, as well as anything taking place in the deep south of the USA, so that means the Border Crossing and Midland Ranch. These all need to be conquered solo on the Death Wish difficulty, with no AI teammates to help us out. As with previous abridged challenge runs, we'll be starting off at level 100 with access to all skills and perk decks in the game, however we're going to be very limited in terms of our available weaponry. Damage can only be dealt with the Lumber Light Chainsaw, Throwing Axe Throwable, as well as the Over 9000 Saw, which I have modded to deal its usual increased damage to all types of bulldozers with the Saw vs Dozers Damage Fix mod. All equipment is fair game, which is going to be incredibly important for one heist later in the run. That's it for the rules, so with these weapons at our disposal, I'm sure it's going to be a real Texas massacre. Before heading into our first heist, I put together a thematic but also deadly build for our Halloween killer. Sadly, we can't get away from a few staples of these solo runs, with jokers being a necessity in almost any run, but let's just imagine this is the Sawyer family getting back together. Equally necessary is uppers for the first aid kit spam to make us as resilient as a horror villain. After we've picked up those necessities though, we can go ahead and grab saw skills to optimize our damage up against bulldozers. On Death Wish, enemy damage is high enough that I feel forced into the ICTV, so that means Iron Man aced, but in the process I can also grab skills such as shock and awe for the shield knockback and resilience, which just makes too much sense not to use. In Fugitive, I select the bare minimum melee skills to boost our already overpowered multi-hit chainsaw, including Counter-Strike, which will be really powerful up against sluggish bulldozers, and then end off in the Revenant Tree with Fame Death and Messiah, basically core skills for any self-respecting, semi-immortal, chainsaw-wielding madman. As you can probably guess, this is going to be a sociopath build, with the massive melee damage amplification being pivotal for maximum chainsaw destruction. Not only that, but the panic effect from Showdown should be huge for keeping me alive. Paired with Saw Massacre's Panic Effect, which can be activated by throwables such as my hatchets, I'm all but guaranteed to stun enemies in fear after every kill I pick up, turning most threats on the map into horror movie protagonists that never seem to make the right call. So with John Wick now fully dressed up for the occasion, I decided to test Leatherface out on the hardest heist from last year's event, Lab Rats. Within a couple of minutes, it was already a bloody mess. The DPS on this setup was admittedly insane, however I wasn't quite as immortal as I anticipated. The issue is that for my chainsaw to actually deal damage, I have to be charging it, which massively limits my movement speed and results in me taking a lot more unwanted damage than I was built to handle. Admittedly, thanks to the armor gating and regeneration effects of Sociopath, so long as there was stuff to kill, I was indestructible, but once alone and out in the open, I felt about as brittle as Chucky. Even so, with the liberal use of first aid and feigned death procs, I was able to move on to ingredient number two, hydrogen chloride. Sadly, it's here where that childlike intellect roleplay kicks in, as Bubba over here decides to throw the green bag into the clearly red test tube. No idea what came over me, must have been the spirit of Halloween. Ah well, onwards and upwards. Run 2 exposed how weak this build was when it came to dealing with tasers. Even with basic shot proof, I was really at their mercy, especially if they spawned in duos. 
I got away with one close call thanks to feigned death, but was really getting into the role at this point, managing to fall from what looked to be a survivable height for a man mountain like Leatherface, but sadly using up my messiah charge in reality. Without this, the next time I took an impromptu tumble, it was game over. I can see why the killers walk everywhere in these movies, clearly running is too much for them to handle. Despite the clear lethality of this build, sometimes Lab Rats just ruins you with miserable spawn luck and its wild map layout. Once again, for a run like this, snipers were pretty much out of range for me, making it a lot harder to stay alive on the far side of the heist. Especially when paired with those pesky tasers, it was almost always curtains. As a result of this, keeping those ingredient bags on the spawn side of the map was really important. Fortunately, I was also aware of these super secret killer shortcuts from last year's torture on this heist, making it a lot easier for me to traverse the map and secure the chloride and caustic soda. After somehow staying alive through this mad scramble, Run 4 was looking to be the one, until I broke my own rules and tried to take on two headless dozers at once, the only beings more cursed than myself on this heist, taking both down but at the cost of leaving no living enemies in the vicinity to activate my messiah charge on. A painful way to let it all end. Despite that bitter disappointment, I was getting a lot of practice in with the build and starting to refine my strategies. It seemed like my best bet in a pinch was to quickly activate panic with a swift throwing axe kill before going to town on everything in the area with the chainsaw. And oh boy, was that chainsaw satisfying to use. I'm holding out hope that Payday 3 will have a much greater variety of melee weapon applications, because if this modded version is anything to go by, it could be insanely fun. Sadly, Leatherface's physical build was not best honed for jumping up around the map, getting stuck at the top of the bag short curtain, making a huge mess jumping over. This was another clue that heist reversal really wasn't in my DNA, as I fell to yet another unceremonious death a couple of minutes later. Gravity, once again, proves to be the strongest force in gaming history. But that wasn't going to deter me, and neither was getting decimated out of the sky by a sniper trickshot on run number 6. This felt very doable, much easier than last year's run. Despite being tormented by a taser at the start of this attempt, I was able to stabilize things and first secure the muriatic acid. Shortly after, I had one of the most epic 1v1 battles up against a minigun dozer. You can be the judge of who won this one, but in true horror villain fashion, I rose from the dead not once, not twice, but on three separate occasions to get my revenge on dozer kind. Some malevolent force really was looking out for me on this one, and boy did I pay it back. Dead by Daylight's Leatherface has nothing on Payday 2's potential kill count. Finally, it was time to break up the meth, which I'd learned last time was far easier to do with my throwing axes, before fleeing to the Xville for a murder spree well committed. That was seriously challenging, and a great sign for the rest of this run, at least for you guys. Up next, I thought I'd go with Cursed Kill Room, which you can complete simply by sitting in spawn and doing nothing, but that's hardly in the spirit of things, so I pledged to secure at least one safe's worth of cloak of gold. On attempt one, I got to find out how it felt to be the one being hunted, as the opening safe location was just too exposed for my close quarters setup to handle. After just about managing to flee the initial onslaught, I was probably put down by a squad of zombie dozers. For run 2 though, I'd learn my lesson, taking a convert as soon as possible to split the focus before hopping into the circle. Despite some problematic sniper spawns, I was able to hold out and unlock the safe, creating the biggest mess we've seen so far in the process of securing that gold. For some unknown reason, I risked a second run, being humbled by another taser, before fleeing with my tail between my legs. Oh well, at least I proved myself the alpha amongst dozer kind on this one. With Prison Nightmare up next, I decided to switch up the build and showcase just how insane this modded chainsaw DPS really could be. I picked up Crit Chance with Low Blow and Unseen Strike, getting rid of one of my saws and equipping the Heavy Ballistic Vest to settle on 26 Detection Risk. This turned my chainsaw into a damn industrial conveyor belt of destruction. However, it also made Leatherface a little more fragile than I'd like him to be, resulting in me using my Messiah Charge under 2 minutes into the heist. About 30 seconds later, a squad of snipers put me back in the ground, but apparently Fain Death was having none of it. This build was getting a spotlight, even if it was clearly a quantifiable downgrade from my previous one. Once actually in the prison, it was slightly easier for me to avoid sudden death events, however I was seriously leaning on Upper's Ace to keep me alive. This goes to show, in Payday 2, survivability tends to outperform damage output, at least on difficulties below death sentence. 
With a few more incredibly close calls, I was able to drill and protect the wheel in the courtyard, hitting a sick throwing axe to buy a little time and all but confirm I'd be able to run for the escape. Not before Satan got his hands on my game and decided to go all exorcist on poor Bubba, giving this medic what had to be the most painful looking death I've ever seen in Payday 2. Sadly, I didn't have time to investigate this mystery with the gang, as the escape was now open and another assault wave on its way. Instead of avoiding conflict on the way out, I tore through a few more unsuspecting swats before making it to the train. This was the easy part. The run across the bridge was absolutely going to be where my problems would really come about. I'd switched over to lighter armor for this heist intentionally, but I'd still need luck to be on my side to make it through. In another amazing stroke of good fortune, I had a third successive feign death activation carry me to glory, especially after this pair of snipers couldn't hit the broad side of a barn. That was an exhilarating heist, but absolutely not the right way to go about this challenge run. However, up next was Safe House Nightmare, a complete outlier within Payday 2 that stands as theoretically the biggest roadblock for a challenge such as this. To get anywhere with it, I'd absolutely need some drill skills. This meant a big switch away from skills that don't actually do anything on this heist, such as shotproof and partners in crime, and the addition of a few more experimental options to try and take on my white whale. The best idea I could figure out was to take jack of all trades and go with trip mines to avoid being completely overwhelmed. Getting bad RNG on the random effect could obviously doom a run, but I just had to hope for the best. On attempt 1, I set up completely, which was probably inefficient bearing in mind how easily I could take out lone dozers with the chainsaw. Sadly, 2 minutes into the heist, I was trapped and unable to reach the drill to fix it. Without enough remaining firepower and the increasing enemy spawn rate on Deathwish, I'd never be able to make an opening again. So after creating an incredibly impressive mess by the door of the side room, I eventually found myself completely overran and cut down without enough damage to activate Messiah. And so a pattern emerged. I'd be able to hold off the dozers for roughly the first two minutes until the drill started breaking and then was sent into a war of attrition I simply didn't have the resources to win. Despite some impressively bloody explosions, after three tries at it, I realized this wasn't going to be the strategy. In fact, at one point on run three, I managed to sandwich myself beside the drill underneath the dozer's impenetrable shield, giving me absolute protection from their weapons. Unfortunately, melee strikes could still get through, and I was eventually dislodged and brought down before I could even get the vault open. That was bloody intense. But back to the drawing board, as I looked to attempt a crit heavy playstyle, which gave me a little more firepower to hold out, but simply reduced my survivability too drastically, resulting in often less successful runs than before. Admittedly, if I managed to roll a self restarting drill with Kickstarter, I did have a chance at opening the vault, but even then it would be almost impossible to actually secure the loot with headless dozers still spawning. Hell, this run was brutal, turning the old safe house basement into the soy house until I accidentally hit the jump key and activated the random tase effect which absolutely secured my downfall. Tasers managing to end runs even when not physically present. Pretty impressive. Try as I might, it simply wasn't looking possible this way, with run after run ended by the constant stream of headless assholes giving Leatherface a taste of his own medicine. Unfortunately, it was time to break character somewhat, and break the game in the process. Once again, I was forced to use the forbidden sentry gun technique, placing it behind the couch to distract every dozer on the map. I'm amazed this abusive game mechanic still hasn't been fixed, but I'm absolutely not complaining. In any case, it's not entirely foolproof as Leatherface managed to once again cock things up, going out to fix the drill before the dozer spawn cap had been hit and getting soundly torn apart as a result. Oh well, patience is a virtue and despite my best efforts to fail yet another time, on the 10th attempt at this heist I was finally able to wait out the drilling time and secure all four bags of cash to wake up from this nightmare. Let's just say, some spooky entity helped Bubba out shall we? Don't question how this idiot managed to figure out technology. Now usually that would be a rather disappointing way to end a challenge, however Leatherface's Texan ties means that there's still a couple more difficult heists to take on. I decided to switch back over to the original lower damage ICTV build before heading to the Midland Ranch. You see, Leatherface is such a terrifying villain, the Chainsaw Massacre broke the trope of horror having to be set at night. So it's only right that we head back to our roots and take over the ranch in the middle of the day for a truly authentic challenge. This was never going to be easy though, predominantly due to the difficulty of bag moving on solo runs. As such, I headed left to tackle the hardest section first. 
After soaring through a few gates and shoving together weapon parts to create what likely looked like a school child's first DT project, I was able to start moving the bags via the Fulton cage. An actual army of shields managed to band together and waste my messiah charge early on, which really was a big hit unfortunately. Without that insurance policy, I was forced to play a little more conservatively before wasting all my throwing axes trying to take out a sniper. As these couldn't be replenished, I was now massively exposed to any spawning tasers. For a while, this didn't look as if it was going to be an issue. I was able to secure 5 weapons airily and then the final 3 via a golf cart. Whilst I doubt Leatherface has great memories of his experiences with vehicles in the past, the golf cart already handles like it's being driven by a raving psychopath, so I'm quite comfortable making use of it here. Alas, that foreshadowing of taser danger would come to pass in the end, getting held still and eventually brought down almost 18 minutes into the heist. I wasn't about to let a ranch claim victory though. Despite a very rocky start, I was able to stabilise and secure a few bags via the cage on my next run. Once again, the golf cart would come to the rescue as I was able to load it up with effectively all 5 remaining bags and drive them to the pier. Here I was massively held up by the insane spawn rate at this location, leading to a mad scramble as most of the wood was painted red, but a clutch play by the cart once again turned dozers into bowling pins and secured my completion of the first half of this heist. This time I was in the zone within the ranch building with enough remaining axes to keep any pesky tasers at bay. After the laptop was decrypted, I returned to the pier to look upon my handiwork, nearly got myself killed due to that iconic bloodlust and just about made it out with seconds to spare. Ranch conquered, time to take to the hills for a border crossing. By no means was this going to be an easy one either though. The US side of the heist is absolutely fine, with no snipers to ruin the party. I secured the explosives and blasted my way through to Mexico, admittedly not before tasers once again gave me some problems. However, it's once on this side of the border that the problems really start to arise. Things suddenly become a loot fest, with back moving not being Leatherface's idea of a good time. The saw massively speeds things up, but the immense sniper coverage and lack of real blind spots on this heist make it a nightmare for us to trudge through, relying heavily on first aid and a fair dose of good fortune. Alas, it seemed like my luck had finally run out, with the sniper army refusing to miss a shot, quickly putting me in the dirt. To rub salt into the wound, attempt 2 was a travesty. I completely failed to take a convert and was swamped by tasers before I had the chance to recover from an initial down. 4 in 2 minutes has to be a record. I was so demoralised by my own gameplay here that it actually entered my head to try for a leather face stealth build, but something about silently wielding a chainsaw wouldn't have sat right with me. No, this had to be done the right way. After a much cleaner start on attempt 3, I was set up early on. Admittedly, I was still performing terribly on the US side of this heist for some reason, managing to get down twice to the same dozer and being luckily saved by a feigned death proc on both occasions, preserving that charge of Messiah. In Mexico, I rolled cash again for the required loot type, which at least isn't the worst possibility, and started methodically moving it around the sides of the map, spending as much time away from snipers as I possibly could. This was a lot harder than I initially expected it to be, finding myself using first aid kits like candy just to stay afloat. There were more close calls than I can even show you on this video, with untouchable snipers and dozers teaming up to create all sorts of problems for me when moving the loot. A taser reaffirmed why they've been the largest problem on this challenge throughout, taking me down but fortunately still not requiring my messiah charge to live through. Even once I'd secured all the bags, that wasn't the hard part over. It was the process of setting up and refueling the plane that seriously had me out in the open and at the mercy of the RNG gods. This was also the first time that I truthfully struggled to deal with the US Marshals, as they peppered me from range and created an additional threat on top of the ever-present snipers. I guess when you limit yourself sufficiently, even these bozos are dangerous. Once I finally gathered the confidence to take out one of the snipers, I earned a little bit of space to get objectives done, but that didn't stop me going down for my fourth and final life. Yep, that's 4 consecutive feign death activations, or roughly a 4% chance occurrence. I've never seen this skill get so much value in all my years playing. Clearly, RPing has its advantages. But now, there'd be no more second chances. For once, there really wouldn't be another sequel. In trying to defend the hose, I had some seriously close calls, but just about hung on for the final section of this heist, the escape. Whilst the paranormal occurrences kept on happening around me, with this guy somehow stuck in a doorframe and this fella levitating a foot off the ground, somehow the most astonishing thing of all was the fact that Leatherface kept dodging certain death at the hands of snipers. 
With the power of Die Hard and my very last remaining FAK, I set up the C4, blew a path to escape and stepped on board the plane to go terrorise the rest of Mexico. That had to be one of the luckiest Payday 2 heists I've ever embarked on, and also one of the most intense. And with that success, Halloween has been saved, or ruined, depending on your perspective. Truly, this has been my favourite challenge run to play through so far, just due to the ridiculousness of it all, and I'm a little sad that I didn't go for a full game playthrough on this one. Still, it's nice to feature new DLC heists and difficult challenges such as Lab Rats in this series. Here's the final build from the Leatherface challenge run. If you want to give something like this a go yourself, all the mods I use to create the effect can be found down in the description. As ever, I'd stick to using any gameplay impacting mod for solo use or with friends. My main takeaway from this one is that Payday 3 desperately needs more diversity in its melee system, as the addition of a simple mod completely transformed how the game could be played effortlessly. Thank you so much for watching this video, I wish everyone a fantastic Halloween, and I'll be back in November for yet another exciting challenge run. Stay tuned. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24 hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.